All right, live on Facebook. Here we go. Here we go. Ready to go. My name is Adam Handler. I'm your case handler. Good morning, everybody. Just uh, checking, making sure. Squeeze, we're live on Facebook. We are live on Facebook. Excellent. And uh, are we live on 93.5 FM? We're finally live on 93.5 FM. All right. So listen, it looks like uh, all systems go. Ladies and gentlemen, it is Friday, January 8th, 2021. Um, it is uh, the weekend, uh, weekend eve, as we call it. And uh, I am your case handler. We are Pollock, Pollock, Isaac DeSico. And the good news for you is that yet again, as you've been probably doing all week, at 9.30 a.m., you've been cruising with the case handler. We are attorneys. We're here to answer questions uh, uh, on this show and over social media for free while you're uh, giving us a call and, 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 and let us, uh, letting us know how we can help you. And then, of course, we'd like you to book that consultation with us. We'd like to, you to hire us uh, to be your attorneys, uh, attorneys that do exceptional work. Um, I handle the personal injury cases. My partners handle the immigration cases, the real estate, the real estate cases, the criminal defense cases. Uh, with me today uh, is Conrad the Maestro Pollock, the managing partner of the firm and one of the most one of the most experienced immigration attorneys you'll find out there. And of course, we also have Nelson the Maverick Madrid, my partner, my buddy. Um, the man that has the uh, glowing window behind him that needs to uh, you know, turn down that shade so we can see his, uh, his, uh, his handsome face. He flies by his own rules and he'll make sure that if uh, you or your family, God forbid, are ever put in deportation proceedings, that you're going to fight your way through that and legalize your status here in the United States. So without further ado, good morning, Squeeze. Good morning, Nelson. Good morning, Conrad. I'm down with PPID. Nelson's down with PPID. Conrad's down with PPID. Squeeze. I will I, check I, I the fifth time today. You know me. Come on. All right. All right. Just making sure. And you got your microphone. We, we want good production. We want good sound, Squeeze. Let's make it happen. The people out there need to hear us clearly and need to know exactly what we are, who we are, what we do, and, and how we can help them. Absolutely. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, welcome to Cruising with the Case Handler a show about personal injury and immigration law. Why don't we switch it up a bit? It's Friday, TGIF. We'll let Nelson start the show. We've got Adam Handler. We've got Conrad Pollock. We've got Nelson Madrid. The shades are down. Okay, we've got more light on the space. How you doing, Nelson? Uh, you got to unmute. You got to unmute. I'm sorry. I'm uh, actually doing well. Um, I got back yesterday from Vermont. I was in Vermont yesterday for uh, a naturalization interview. Um, I left on Wednesday, came back on Thursday, and I am home today, homeschooling my children while working remotely. What's a naturalization interview? What is that? So anytime someone applies for naturalization, uh, eventually they are scheduled for an interview. During the interview, they are asked uh, a series of civics questions um, you know, right now you are asked 10 questions out of the 10, you have to get six correct. Mm -hmm. Then you are asked to read a sentence and to write a sentence. Uh, then they basically review your application. And if all is in order, uh, they basically inform you that they will recommend your application for approval. And then ultimately you're scheduled for an oath ceremony where you take your oath and become a United States citizen. Wow. And you, tra you traveled all the way up to, to Vermont for that, for a client? I did. I did actually. Um, you know, even though, and, and I think this confuses a lot of people, you can pass the exam. That does not make you a citizen until you actually take your oath ceremony, your oath of allegiance. That yeah. is when you're a citizen. So, you can go to the exam, you can pass the exam, the officer can tell you, I'm gonna recommend your application for approval, but until you actually take your oath of allegiance to the United States, you are not a citizen. Oh, wow. Have you guys ever seen where people have actually done the naturalization and then, and you know, not take the oath and then lose their citizenship? Absolutely, I, we see that all the time. In fact, uh, some people pass the exam and uh, while they're waiting for the oath ceremony, either an issue arises that deals with their past immigration history or they are arrested. 
And when you appear for your oath ceremony, you have to complete a form pretty much confirming that you haven't been arrested since the time of your interview or nothing has changed. And if you have been arrested, you literally get pulled out of the line and are told to provide, you know, documents related to that arrest before you can take your oath ceremony. Uh, but that is actually very common. I've, I've seen that many times. Wow. I, I, that I did not know. That's new to me. Yeah, you learn, you learn something new with us. <laughs> Today, I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. So people do get pulled out. Yes, yes, it does happen. Unbelievable. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, if you are just joining us right now, I am David Squeezanaki. I'm here with three attorneys, two of which deals primarily with immigration, one which deals with accidents, of course, and it's with one law firm. The firm is called Pollock, Pollock, Isaac, and DeSico. It's a full-service law firm, and everyone who listens to 93.5 FM now understands that they don't go anywhere else for attorneys. They have that one firm which has dominated this station, rightfully so, okay, to help each and every single one of you. Every one of you now have help, ladies and gentlemen. So I want everyone tuning in, store the number. You may not need it now, but I promise you one day you will need it. Make the call once again to PPID, Paula Pollock, Isaac, and DeSico. The number is 844-774-3529. That's 844-774-3529. There are hundreds of thousands of people that's tuning into the station. We all need good attorneys, ladies and gentlemen. Fortunately or unfortunately, we do. We will need legal help. So make the call to Pollock, Pollock, Isaac, and DeSico. 844-774-3529. That's 844-774-3529. Three, five, two, nine. We're going to jump to personal injury right now. But Conrad, how you doing, man? How you feeling in the tropics there? Uh, I wish. I wish. Uh, but I'm feeling okay this morning. Okay. I had my large cup of coffee. I'm ready to go. And um, I'm looking at my ba- my landscape there. And I'm uh, wishing I was there just like you. I mean, you're there. I'd like to be there. Looking at my background, the lamp and a picture on the wall, you know? But, I'm actually noticing right now, Squeeze, that the calls are coming in. You know, people are calling that number right now, which is a wonderful thing. Let, let's give out that number a few more times. Let's really fire it up here. You know, get people excited about the prospect of, of legalizing their status here in the United States or having their question answered about personal injury. I mean, really, uh, we are exceptional lawyers that do exceptional work. And uh, we, we truly hope that you uh, will consider us if, God forbid, you ever need a lawyer. And I say, God forbid, but you know, there are positive things that you need us for. Maybe you wanna file for your citizenship finally and make your voice heard and be able to vote uh, in this country and, and do all those other wonderful things. Uh, or maybe you're getting married, you need to adjust your status. There are some wonderful things that lawyers can help you with, but there are also, there are also very serious things that lawyers uh, would help you with. You know, For example, like I said before, if you're unfortunately in deportation proceedings or you're trying to get a loved one up uh, from another country and bring them here to the United States, uh, or if, of course, you're, God forbid, in that accident that you never expected, uh, you, you would be, uh, be very, very smart uh, to at least consider our firm uh, to represent you and your family in those situations. And again, our phone number is 844-774-3529, 844-774-3529, or easy to remember, 844-PPID-LAW. Hey, uh, while you're talking and giving out the phone number, let's remind people about our newsletter as well. Yep, absolutely. Uh, you know, a lot of people tune into the show every morning uh, every weekday morning, that is at 930, um, to get information and answer their questions and just to get general information about immigration or any other kind of uh, law that they might be interested in. We have a newsletter. Our firm, uh, PPID, has a newsletter that we send out pretty much every week or two, um, which provides details on all the uh, updates on, on new laws, new regulations. And that's not just immigration, not just personal injury. It's pretty much every field you can think of, whether it's litigation or real estate, any, anything that's happening in a legal field, you know, we try to be topical and we try to be current. Um, and we have this newsletter and we send it out. I, our current list, I don't know 
how many people, 10, 20, 30,000 email addresses are on there. But if you're interested, you know, if you're tuning into the show today, I, I would think you'd be interested in getting our newsletter as well. So uh, Adam, you want to give out that? Yeah. Uh, so, so, so the email address to be connected to our newsletter and just to be connected to our firm in general is consults at ppid.com. So let me, let me just break that in again. It's consults, which is C-O-N-S-L-U-T-S, consults. Wait, S-L- is that wrong? Well, C-O-N-S-U-L-T. What did I say? You left out the U. Oh, sorry. Try, so try that again. C-O-N-S-U-L-T-S at ppid.com consults at ppid.com. Just send us an email um, with your name uh, and your phone number and uh, you'll be connected to our firm. We'll put you in our database if there's ever any special changes in the law or of course that newsletter that we send out, you'll be connected to us. It really is an easy way uh, and it costs nothing, of course, uh, to be connected to our firm, connected to our practice, be connected to our lawyers. So again, it's consults at ppid.com. You know, just to give some information in terms of how we prepare this newsletter, as I said, we do this every week or two. And, you know, all the lawyers at the firm are getting you know, updates on their emails, uh, on their servers on a regular basis. And again, whether it's immigration or personal injury or just, you know, the New York courts being open or closed or this happened in a divorce case or or our litigation department settled this case or, or won this uh, major case in the appellate division. Um Every lawyer at the firm is responsible to send to a central location at the firm, to our marketing department, uh, these updates. And with regard to immigration, the last four years, and these updates happen daily. Um, So, and every attorney in the firm sends these updates to our marketing department. The marketing department then compiles them all into a big list, uh, and they put them as part of our newsletter. And that newsletter goes out, as I said, once every week or two, um, and it goes out to the, everybody who's on that list uh, that's on the distribution list. And again, if you're interested, I assume if you're if you're here today, if you're listening to the show today, that means you're interested in what's happening in the law. This is a really good way of, of, of staying on top of what's going on. If you miss yeah. our show, at least you're getting our newsletter and you see what's going on. And it's gonna, and it's particularly important these days with immigration because there's going to be so many new things happening. Once once uh, the, 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 the lunatic in office is gone in a couple of weeks and we have a new, legitimate, intelligent, normal president. Um, who <laughs> so, you know, a lot of good things are going to be happening with, with regard to the immigration field. So our newsletter is even more important than it usually is. So, yeah, and, and, and it's a great way to be connected to our firm. WADA, I like it. Uh, it's a great way to be connected to our firm. And just another example of how, you know, we've embraced the community that's embraced us. You know, we're, we're attorneys. We're giving all this legal advice and, and, and legal information out there uh, in the newsletter for free. Again, no strings attached. It's a great way to be connected to our to our firm and our practice. And, of course, to what's going on in immigration law, things that are going to affect you and affect the people that you, you love and you care about. So, again, it's consults at ppid.com. You've got nothing to lose, everything to gain by sending that by sending that email to us. Again, consults at ppid.com. Um, I'm going to hop off in a few minutes. If you don't mind, I'd just like to talk about, uh, you know, just a special case we had a, a, in the PI department. We always like to talk about these true life success stories. Squeeze, if you can make me a co-host, I'd appreciate it. And then we'll get to some immigration questions. Ladies and gentlemen, remember, uh, if you can safely do so now or later, you know, check us out on Facebook and Instagram. Check out PPID and check out the case handler. And if you've had any questions about immigration or personal injury, just post the questions in the comments or, uh, you know, call into the show or call the number and we'll, we'll try our best to answer them over the, over the radio, over the, over the broadcast for free. And then if there's any follow-up questions, you, of course, give us a call for that discounted consultation. Um, again, our phone number, 844-774-3529. Uh, let's get to a quick true life success story. And like I said, if you're uh, a case handler follower uh, on Instagram or Facebook, you know, you, you know what we're talking about here with Testimonial Tuesday and these true life success stories. But 
Um, there was one case, again, uh, I spoke to him recently, and this is an older file, uh, a case we settled uh, in two, at the end of 2019, but an important case squeeze. This was the case, uh, oh, geez, I don't know what is going on there, um, with, uh, I'm getting all these pop-ups. I got to get that fixed. Sorry about that, guys. I don't know what is happening with my computer lately. Uh, pop-ups. I, I know. I don't know what's happening here. Anyway, uh, you know, Michael, he came to us with a very, very serious car accident, um, $1.7 million settlement. I particularly love this case uh, because not only is Michael just a great guy, but, you know, we, we walked away from a million dollar offer on this case. The insurance company was ready to write this guy a check for a million bucks. And I said, Michael, this case is worth more. What do you say? And you got seven hundred thousand dollars more. A week later, after we rejected the million, they called us back and said, "All right, what do you want?" I said, "I want one seven. and they wrote the check. But listen, a lot of lawyers would have jumped at that million dollars. He wanted to jump in the million dollars. He's like, "Million bucks, tax free." My goodness gracious, let's take it. I said, "Michael, please, you got one chance to get this right. We can't reopen your case again. You know, just trust me." And he did. And if you could read that quote for me, squeeze, I would appreciate it. This is without a doubt that the legal team you need, they did good for me and will do good for you too. Michael from the Bronx, 1.7 million US dollars. That's how we do. That's what I got to say. Yeah, it's exactly. And you know, he got, uh, he was driving, he got rear-ended, um, had a neck injury, a back injury, um, and, uh, and a knee injury. And again, $1.7 million dollars. Um, you know, I, also, I also love the, this quote, the process couldn't be any better. Adam Handler and his team was always there, should be were, but that, that he said, we, we quote them verbatim, was always there for me. Um, and, uh, you know, again, this gentleman never in a million years expected that he get into an accident. You know, he, he woke up in the morning, he started his vehicle, he was driving, and all of a sudden, bam, his life has changed forever. But we prevented him from being that victim twice. Right when you're a victim in a in a in a car accident or a construction accident, you're vulnerable, and you're vulnerable because trust me, rest assured, the insurance company is going to do whatever they can to screw you and screw you and your family from getting the money you want. And the best way to fight back is to have an exceptional attorney fighting for you, making sure you get paid for your time out of work, your medical bills, and of course your pain and suffering. And if you want an exceptional attorney to represent you in the same way that Michael was represented, turning down a million dollars, walking away, having the you know what to say a million dollars is not enough, come back to me with more, then I highly suggest you consider the case handler. I highly suggest you consider PPID. And I highly suggest you save our number, 844 844- 774-3529. That's 844-774-3529. With that, I'm going to say, as they uh, say in France, c'est la vie. Have a wonderful weekend. Enjoy yourself. Be safe. Uh, and uh, I hope you enjoy some wonderful information and content um, from uh, the maestro and the maverick and whoever is walking behind Squeeze right now. Uh, but at least he's wearing a mask. That's all good. Later, brothers. Thank you so much for having me on. Thank you so much for tuning in, ladies and gentlemen. We love you. We appreciate you. Thank you so much, Adam Handler. Thank you so much for being the case handler, the shark, the beast, the man with the, uh, the power to help a lot of people out there who have been in accidents, regardless of the accidents being, you know, automobile accident, triple, you know, and so forth, medical malpractice, construction accident. We thank you, my brother. I know you got to go. I know you got to tend to another client of yours. Absolutely, and, man. The and, next true life success story. And, and you wanna know what I love about you, man? I can see the joy in your face when you have to go and work on behalf of a client. It's like, it, it, it gets you so freaking pumped. Listen, I your face. I, I, I'm a third generation attorney. It's in my blood. My family has been doing it for nearly 100 years in New York City. That, those are facts. My grandfather became a lawyer in 1932. So uh, only uh, uh, tw- uh, 11 more years to go and it's 100 years of case handlers uh, for better or worse uh, in New York City. I'll see you guys, take care. All right, thank you so much, Adam Handler. 
Adam Adler, by the way, is a partner at the firm, Paula Pollock, Isaac, and Nisiko. I want to say thanks to him for joining us this morning. It's a few minutes before the hour of 10 right here on 93.5 WVIP FM and also Facebook. We've got immigration question. I mean, man, it's like, what is it with a lot of people just rolling the questions in um, as we start the year? And, and I knew this would happen. So, gentlemen, um, Nelson Madrid, Conrad Pollock, let's jump right into it. Let's jump into a question here. It says here, a friend of mine is involved with someone in Jamaica. However, the person's documents are currently before immigration authorities in the United States of America. His mom is currently filing for her son, who is married along with her daughter, daughters and grandchildren. But the son was intending on getting a divorce from his wife and possibly marrying someone else. So he wanted to know how this would affect this filing process. He also wants to know if there's any way to fix it without affecting the current process. The filing has been in progress for the last five to six years and all persons are over 18 years old. I am wondering what advice you would give in this situation. It's a very long-winded question. What? <laughs> I know. I know. Hey, let me uh, let me have another cup of coffee before I before <laughs> I uh, answer that one. I uh, Nelson, did you get all of that? No, I actually got a phone call in the middle of the question. I'm sorry. All right. Um, all right well, let, let's assume. I mean, there are a lot of details that he left out or that are necessary to answer that question specifically. But let's assume that the petitioner or the mother is applying for the kids that are all over 18 uh, right. and she's a citizen. Now, some, somebody there is married. Um, if they get a divorce... The son, the son is married and is right. intending on getting a divorce. All right, if he gets and divorced... possibly marrying someone else. All right, so if he's married and his mother has applied for him, that means his mother has to be a U.S. citizen. It's a third right. preference. Case. case like that could take 10, 10 plus years. Right. If he gets divorced, his case will go much faster. He can mm -hmm. do that. He can divorce her and then has to notify the government that he's divorced. It becomes a first preference case, right. which means the case would go faster. If he gets married again, though, it'll again become a third preference case. He can do that and include his wife. And I'm, I assume that's answering part of his question. I didn't. I don't know any of the other details about the rest of the family or, or what. This is something that you know you need to call us I man you, you really need you need a lawyer to handle this stuff it's going to get complicated it's just going to take longer and longer if you try to do it yourself give us a call give us the specifics and then maybe we can help you once again folks that's the reason why this is cruising with a case on their show on personal injury and immigration thank you so much all right, let's get to another question here. Hold on, hold on one second, actually. I'm sorry. I, I just want to jump in for a second. Uh, sure. You know, I haven't been on the show for the last couple of days. Obviously, I, I've been away. Uh, Conrad, what's going on with the Senate? What's going on with the Senate? Who has control of the Senate? Uh, you, have been, uh, you have been uh, out of touch, man. Right. Who has, who has they, control uh, of the Senate? What does that mean for immigration? Don't they have Wi-Fi up in Vermont? I'm sure well, they do. I wasn't. I, I was driving for seven hours. You know, I don't have a helicopter like you do to land on the roof of the <laughs> hotel that I'm staying at. I actually, was driving. Actually, if you look at my background, you can see my helicopter just a little bit off to the yeah, right over there. I'm, I'm it? sure. I'm sure yeah. it's there. <laughs> um, that's my boat out there too. Exactly. Yeah, I believe it. Um, anyway, um, with regard to the Senate, uh, yes, the Democrats have now got an even split 50 50 in the senate and that means our incoming vice president uh kamala harris will be the deciding vote in the senate which means that the democrats now will control the presidency the house of representatives and the senate which means a lot of stuff will happen uh, the senate is not going to be as much of a check on the biden administration's proposed legislation and regulatory changes that they're going to be making uh, as it might have been otherwise Look, in the Senate, most votes still require a 60 vote majority um, and, they, and the Democrats only have 50-50, but a lot more things are gonna happen now, good things hopefully, um, than would have happened had the Democrats not won the, the two runoff seats the other day. Um, right. And um, actually, I was just listening to, to, I was listening to someone this morning uh, who was talking about all the stuff that's been going on in the last couple of days and made a good point, you know, that. The, the basically we should be looking on the bright side um how bad things could have been if if if, if the president wasn't wasn't such a coward and wasn't such a clown 
Um, if we had an actual competent guy in there right now who knew what he was doing, this could have been a lot worse. This could have been a coup, you know? I mean, <laughs> luckily, again, luckily our current president can't get out of his own way and basically shot himself in the foot here and tarnished his, his, his legacy and his legacy and hopefully that of his family. So hopefully none of them will ever be able to run again. Let's hope. Just my own little commentary. I want to just throw that in there, but anyway. And, and once again, and there's so much happening right now, but I want to say, um, I'm very happy that you guys are here to help out the community, you know? Um, so pretty much the Democrats will have control pretty much of all the different areas yeah. of government. Yeah. Right which, now. Means, which means McConnell, you know, McConnell's job has basically been to kill legislation. You know, it comes to his desk and that's where it dies. He is no longer into he is no longer the majority leader. He's no he is no longer the the, the in, in charge of the Senate and all the committee chairmanships will now be Democrats. Ch uh, Chuck Schumer will be running the Senate. There'll be a lot of a lot of changes, a lot of major changes. And um, you know, the Republicans warnings and threats about uh, socialism and you know the country is never going to be the same and you know we're, we're going to become a communist country you know now we will see what nonsense that was yeah there's going to be some progressive legislation hopefully that does happen um but you know all these ridiculous warnings about socialist takeover and all you know we're going to now see what nonsense that was all right which which is good i i'm looking forward to that and um uh actually i i think especially from an immigration perspective, there's a lot of good things ahead. The Biden administration has already said within the first 100 days, they're going to roll back a lot of the negative damaging stuff that the Trump administration has put out there. Um, and, 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 and of course, and they're still doing this. The, the Trump administration is trying to get out as many regulations and instructions as they possibly can over the next 10 days before they're gone. But Biden has already said he's going to put a freeze on everything that they're doing. So good stuff as far again as far as immigration goes. In particular, also um, the travel ban that I know a lot of people are, are concerned about. It, the Trump administration he signed it, he extended it on December thirty first at the last minute, uh, and it's going now until the end of March. I don't know that Biden is going to end it himself. I think it'll just expire on March thirty first, and that'll be the end of it. So those of you that have been waiting for your relatives to come for the last whatever number of years and then were put off just as they were about to get scheduled for interviews last, this past year. Um, they'll now be able to come, this, the relatives will now be able to come probably this summer, fall. Um, there are going to be backlogs, there's going to be delays because consulates have been closed due to COVID. Um, but there is a lot of good news ahead. You know, I think also, maybe I'm being overly optimistic, you know, with the vaccines, I mean, again, you know, just like with the COVID uh, response, this administration, rolling out the vaccines. I mean, they can't get anything right, you know, but once the Biden administration comes in, hopefully they're going to make it a priority and we'll actually have a president who will actually even like talk about and mention the fact that we're in the middle of a pandemic. Uh, they'll actually get the vaccines rolled out and, and, and people will get it, get, will get those vaccines into their arms. And hopefully by the second half of this year, things will get back to normal. And I'm optimistic that the economy is going to be humming. And I think there are a lot of good times ahead. And that includes uh, prospects for immigration. Uh, a lot of good stuff ahead. So there's a lot of reason for optimism out there today. Right. Shout out to everyone in Georgia who voted and got it right. Because without you, we would not be where we are today. So kudos, big ups, and uh, thank you for getting it right. I mean, for a minute there, I thought we almost wouldn't make it. Yeah, so, so did I. Nope, but <laughs> <laughs> Look again. If 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 it was a normal presidency, if it was a normal Democratic in, uh, uh, administration coming in and a normal Republican administration going out, I don't think it would have happened. I think the seats would have at least split, but the Republicans would have at least gotten one of them, if not both of them. But Trump was out there saying, "Well, the elections are fraud, and you know, and it's it's all rigged, and you know, don't don't vote." Well, a lot of his followers apparently listened to him. And they didn't vote. They well, didn't well I vote. think and I think what happened was you had a lot of people who don't normally vote who went out and voted absolutely as a rebuke, you know, absolutely. to basically show that their voice counted because, you know, again, coincidentally, the votes they were trying to suppress were Atlanta, Philadelphia, Detroit, 
you know, he, why, there, there why, was, why is that? Who who's voting in those right, places? Well, Wonder that's why. correct. That's correct. So, you know, right. Georgia basically stepped up to the plate and got it right. And they sent, in my opinion, as you said, I completely agree. He did this to himself. But I think the people obviously, you know, he lost the popular vote. He lost the Electoral College and he lost the Senate. I, I think that speaks volumes. Absolutely. I mean, this is the first time that there's actually been a cost to the Republican Party by Trump. I mean, so far, you know, all the stuff that he's done and the enablers out there and all in the election in November. I mean, he was the only one who lost. The Republicans actually did pretty well in the November elections. But now, because of his stupidity and his just toxic toxicity, just everything negative and rigged and just uh, and is just blathering about nonsense uh, actually cost the Republican Party. And I think that's why you see a lot of these people turning and hunting him now and resigning and you know, because they're actually, they don't need, they, these Republicans are seeing they don't need him as much as they did before. If the, Repub if the Republicans had kept the Senate, I think you probably wouldn't have had so many resignations. And I don't think you would have had so many people turning on him. But now that he, they lost the Senate, they see that t Trump has actually cost the party. And of course, Trump doesn't care about that. All he cares about himself. He doesn't give a shit. I give a damn about the party. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but this, this was a major, major, uh, Thing that happened and you know one 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 more comment unfortunately you know uh biden and other people saying you know this is not us and this is not america all this stuff that went on the other day you know i hate to say it but you know it, this is a part of america you go back in our history you know these people that marched the other day and not all of them but i'm talking about the ones that that stormed the capitol I mean, i'm sure there are a lot of decent people in that march that are just being misled is that even this woman who died, who was in the military for 14 years, and I mean, she just she was she was misinformed. She was misled by by this president who's been lying to his followers to get money and to just who knows maybe just for a giggle, you know. But she was misled, and look, it cost her life. You know, it's really unfortunate. Okay. But but all of this stuff that's happening, I mean, unfortunately, it is a part of our history. You know, I mean. The KKK has been there, and, and the, these white supremacists have been there. This is nothing new. What's new is that we've had a president, you know, using the bully pulpit, pu bully pulpit to encourage these people with a wink and a nod, and, and, and just they all think that he's on their side. And, you know, that's what's changed. But this, the, these types of people and, and the racism and, and all, all this bad stuff has been part of our history, you know. It's just that they've been allowed over these last four years to come to the fore, and to, and it's not such a negative, bad thing now to to come out in, in favor of you know white lives as opposed to Black Lives Matter and all of that stuff. And hopefully, and I'm confident that the Biden administration is going to change the tone, and there is going to be a cost reimposed for that type of stuff that the Trump administration not only permitted but endorsed. Not true. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, we are here speaking with the attorneys, and this means a whole lot for immigration with the changes and everything, and we're really looking forward for it in the next two weeks when Biden takes over the White House and a whole lot more. I am very, very happy that that's going to happen. It's time for a lot to take place, so let's change the narrative. Let's change all the BS that has happened um, with that said, let's get back to some questions here before we conclude. I do have two attorneys here, Conrad Pollock and Nelson Madrid, uh, partners at the firm PPID. Here's uh, another one, a little bit long with it also. My wife is six, so I came to the United States to visit her on a B2 visa. Uh, she had already filed the I-190 prior to me coming. My intention was to visit her and return home. However, I had not known the nature of her illness prior to me visiting. When I arrived, I found out that she had a stroke and is unable to fully help herself with her basic needs. She does not want me to return home and is considering to file the adjustment of status. My questions to you, Conrad and Nelson, are, will there be a problem to adjust my status while on the B2 uh, visa? How long will the process take? So she filed, she filed an I-130 for him? Uh, he identified the I-190. Right. Uh, so I, there is no I-190. Yeah. That's, that's why I asked. You know, yeah. um, you know, again, in situations like this, I would strongly recommend you give us a call. 
Um, again, there is no form I-190, which is why I asked, what was right. it that was filed? Um, your case is complicated, but there are options. Um, look, this is not the type of case you try to do on your own. You go to the corner, you know, to the travel agent or your friend up the street who does immigration papers. Your case can potentially be complicated. Give us a call, 844-774-3529. Um, you know, I believe we might be able to help you. Um, you know, again, and I've said this before on this show, sometimes you can't answer a question in a minute or 30 seconds, you know, so as you would say, squeeze, sometimes it behooves the people to actually just give us a call, you know, 844-774-3529. You know, and the, and the complications that we're talking about in, in, involve fraud, uh, based on the way you came and when you came, uh, there certainly can be accusations of misrepresentation leveled against you, uh, and if that happens, it will seriously uh, impact the case of your wife and cause you delays at the very least, delays, more expense and possible denial. And if she gets denied, she gets put into removal proceedings. So yeah, it, it, not to mention, I don't even wanna talk about the, the, the uh, financial issues there uh, if she's unable to support herself. So uh, that's something, again, you really need to give us a call. You need a lawyer. Well well, not just that, also, God forbid, while he's here and in the middle of the process, she passes, yep. right? What yep. then? You know, and, and this is what I'm saying. This is how the case becomes complicated. I always tell my clients, it's a competence attorney. A competent attorney's job is to identify a problem before it becomes a problem. You know, and if his wife is really that ill, you know, that could be potentially a problem because, again, Adjustment of status is taking anywhere from eight months to a year. If during the course of that time, she takes a turn for the worse, what then? Gotcha, gotcha. All right, once again, folks, we're just here doing what's called Cruising with a Case Handler show on immigration and personal injury. Do remember, hire the firm to do your immigration work. The number is 844-774-3529. That's 844-774-3529. Final question. What is the process if a filing is from a grandfather in America for his over 40 year old daughter? The daughter has children and she wants her children's names on the filing also. What is the process if a filing is from a grandfather in America for his over 40 year old daughter? The daughter has children and she wants her children's name on the filing also. Just wanted to repeat that. Conrad, you want to take that question? I'm sorry, I, was, I, I lost the... Uh... A grandfather, it's, it's actually, you, you see, and again, they're, they're incorrectly asking the question. The question is yeah, not being exactly. properly that's asked, that's why okay? Repeating. It's a father filing for his daughter, right? okay? Uh, I, I imagine a United States citizen father filing for his daughter, uh, who is obviously over 21, and the daughter wants, I guess, her children included on her application. Yeah, that is correct. Um, and what was the question? Okay, it says, uh, let's go back to it right now. I'm sorry, I was just trying to flush out the facts because a grandfather cannot petition for grandchildren. Right, but the, gra the grandfather is really, it's a father filing for the daughter. Right. Who's over 40. Right. That's basically, it says, what, it, what is the process if a filing is from a grandfather in America for his over 40 year old daughter? The daughter has children and she wants her children's name on the filing also. Is she well, married? Wait, she's saying grandfather filing for daughter. I mean, that doesn't make sense. Yeah, right. I, well, that's what we just said. They, they obviously, yeah. Yeah. right? They they misstated the question or they misphrased. Yeah. They incorrectly phrased the question. I guess it's a USC petitioning for his daughter over forty. Right? Yeah, exactly. Well, who has children? The daughter. The father is a U.S. citizen. He can apply for his daughter. The daughter can bring her children as long as they're under twenty-one on the date of the interview. Right. Okay. Got it. All right, that's it. By the way, uh, ladies and gentlemen, this, this is the reason why I simply say, you know what? For something that important, your status in the United States, why would you want to screw it up? Why would you want to mess it up? Just have the attorneys do it. Listen, call this number, 844-774-3529. That's 844-774-3529. Uh, gentlemen, very important. Um, on Monday, we need to speak about e-visas, all right? Um, I have a friend of mine who is a business owner and happens to be in Jamaica and wants to do 
and e-visa. So I would love to speak with you guys more about that, what's required, you know, and the whole nine yards. So we should talk about that on Monday, the e-visas. Sounds right. good. We'll Thank do that on Monday. Thank you so much, Nelson. Seems like Conrad have left us, but thank you so much. And uh, we'll catch up and speak probably over the weekend. If not, definitely on Monday morning at 9.30 a.m. Sounds thank good, you. David. And by the way, if you call me and I don't pick up, chances are I'm on another call or I'm in a meeting. Um, right. You know, I don't call you back because I know you're busy as well. Uh, but I, again, if I'm available, I typically pick up. If anything, you can shoot me a text and I'll get right back to you. Not a problem. Thank you so much, Nelson. I really thank appreciate you, man. Have yourself an amazing weekend. Thank you. You too.